We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. But now, you see, the gospel is the power of God. When you learn that Jesus suffered these things so you might have abundance. He became poor, Paul says. He was rich. He was with God in heaven, with all the riches of heaven. He became poverty stricken on this planet earth for one reason. So that he would bear your poverty so you would not have to. Then he bore your sins so you wouldn't have to bear the results of that sin. And he bore your sickness so you wouldn't have to. You still can, but you don't have to. People say, well, now, Brother Caps, if it was true, we were redeemed from the curse of the law. And one of the curses of the law was sickness. Then nobody would ever get sick again. Oh, is that right? Well, now, let's just check that out. Did he redeem us from sin? Yes, he redeemed us from sin. Glory to God. Well, nobody could ever sin anymore then. See, we blew holes in that one right away, didn't we? <laughs> you see what I'm talking about when I say when you get indoctrinated, you quit thinking? There's a lot of people think that way. Well, if it was God's will, then I'd be rich if it was God's will for me to be rich. Oh, no. It's God's will for everybody to be saved, but everybody's not saved, are they? Can you see that? When Christ came to this planet Earth, he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to loosen, dissolve, and undo the works the devil had done. He came to get everything back to man that Satan took away from him. He came to take everything away from man that Satan put on him and to restore us. And the Bible says he redeemed us from the curse of the law. We're redeemed from sin. We are no less redeemed from poverty than we are from sin. Now listen to me. I know this may be cross-grain with some things you've been taught. But if he redeemed us from the curse, and the curse is threefold, poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. See, we don't have to die spiritually. Jesus suffered for us. He became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God. Well, we're not going to go out here and become sin for him. But there's people tell you, you ought to be poor like Jesus was. You ought not have a house. He didn't have one. He didn't even have a pillow to lay his head on. You ought to be like Jesus. No. You know why Jesus was that way? So you wouldn't have to be that way. And I'll tell you, that's the power of God. When you find out that Jesus did it, so you could have the other side of it. He took the stripes on his back. And he took the bruises on his body that you might be healed. Then somebody said, oh, I'm just suffering for Jesus with this sickness. (laughs) Well, you ought to go ahead and get crucified then. (laughs) Now, see, I really shouldn't have said that. Lord, forgive me. But you see, that's true. If we're trying to bear something that he bore for us. That's just like saying, well, you know, you're behind on your house payment. God's blessed me. I'm going to go down there and pay your house payment for you. And then you say, well, I guess because he paid it, i got to go pay it too. Oh, no, because he paid it, you don't have to. Jesus paid the price so that we might have abundance. Now, listen, Paul says, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich... Yet for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might be made rich. Might be. Didn't say you would. Said you might be. Because see the gospel is the power of God to them that believe. Now someone might say well why are you dwelling so much on finances? Because I'll tell you that's where people are hurting. We've been taught some things that were wrong. Back in our former years I know I was. I got the idea that You wasn't going to get nothing on this earth until you got to heaven. 
See, we sing the song, when we all get to heaven, we'll sing and shout the victory. I found out good news. You can sing and shout the victory here. But it's not going to happen just because it says it in the Bible. We've got to find out about it. We've got to hear it. We've got to believe it. We've got to confess it and act on it. And I'll tell you what, the gospel is going to be preached around the world. The gospel of the kingdom. You know, we've never really preached the gospel of the kingdom. We've preached all around it. But we've never really preached the gospel of the kingdom. What I'm preaching tonight is the gospel of the kingdom. That the kingdom of God is in you and it is capable of supplying every single thing you have need of in this life. Back here to Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus in verse 20 says... Blessed are ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Look at verse 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep, for ye shall laugh. Now notice, the thing they were going through then was going to be changed 180 degrees. So when he said, blessed are ye poor, yours is the kingdom, he's saying the kingdom will make you rich. Now don't get offended at the word rich. Some people just don't want you talking about money in church. (laughs) It's time we begin to talk about it. The Bible said a lot about it. Now, it simply means abundance. Now, what he's saying is, you're blessed not because you're poor. He was ministering to poor people here. You read in there and you find out that some of those people is just poverty stricken. And he said, you are blessed because I'm giving you the kingdom. And he shows you what the kingdom will do. He says, blessed are ye that hunger now, for you'll be filled. And blessed are ye that weep, for ye shall laugh. It's going to change the situation. When? When the kingdom of God comes. And you see, we got to singing those songs and putting it off till the new Jerusalem showed up. Hey, I got news for you. You don't have to wait till the new Jerusalem. God is in the now. Now, let me show you something. Follow me over here to another passage of Scripture in Luke's Gospel. The 12th chapter. Luke chapter 12, and let's start with verse 29. And seek not what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God... And all these things shall be added unto you. How were they going to come? By them seeking the kingdom. But now you know what we thought about? You know what's come into most people's mind? I know I thought this way for years. And I was raised in a full gospel church. I thought when he started talking about the kingdom, I started thinking about up in heaven. Oh yeah, I'm seeking the kingdom. I'm seeking, it's up there somewhere, 10 jillion, trillion miles away, up there, and I'm storing up my money in heaven, and when I get there, I'm going to get all this money with interest. (laughs) What in the world would you do with it then? (laughs) Gas won't be a dollar gallon in heaven. See, we sing that song, when we all get to heaven, it'll be wonderful then, and you know, all of that. Well, sure, it'll be wonderful when you get to heaven. But what are you going to do with the here and now? It's the here and now we got to deal with. And if we don't learn how to deal with the here and now, we may get to heaven quick. (laughs) I don't know why we think this way or why we ever thought this way. You can ask people... Well, do you believe that we ought to prosper and have abundance? Well, no, I just don't know. I just don't know if it's God's will. Well, he said, pray the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, yeah, but, but, (laughs) you know, always thinking about something else. Well, do you believe that God wants you to pay your bills? Pay them on time. 
Have you ever prayed that God would help you pay your bills on time and wouldn't have to put them off and put them off and put them off? And you know, there's people that have prayed those prayers and prayed those prayers and then get offended when you preach and tell them how to do it. How to operate in the principles of the kingdom. You know why? Because they got their mind set in one channel. And they didn't take God's word for it. See, all some people know about the Bible is what they heard somebody say they thought they heard somebody say about it. And they just simply take that as being the gospel. But we need to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to the inside of the word of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. See, here's where we've missed it. When you start talking about seeking the kingdom, most people start thinking about seeking it up there. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Now, if you're going to seek your Bible, if you don't know where it is, and you're going to seek it, you're going to find out first of all where it is. When you seek the kingdom, that's what you do. You find out first of all where it is. And Jesus said, behold. They won't say low here or low there, but he says, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's good news. God bless you. We do appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. I trust you've been blessed. We've been talking about the gospel of the kingdom. Now, our CD offer all of this week is CD offer number 7245. It's entitled, Faith for Kingdom Provisions. Two CDs for $15 plus $4 postage and handling, a total of $19. Did you know that God made provisions for us? 2 Peter chapter 1 tells us that God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. In other words, if you don't know about what Jesus has made available to us, see, it's a finished work. Jesus does not have to suffer one more stripe to get you healed. He does not have to suffer any more to meet your needs. Paul said, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, he was talking to people that were givers, because the scripture says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? God has made kingdom provisions available to us. But you see, we have to make a demand on the provision that God has made. You know, if you have a bank account downtown, they don't send you money every Monday morning. Why? Because you have to make a demand on it before you receive any of it. You have to write a check. That's the way you make a demand on the money that's in the bank. It's yours, all right. It belongs to you. But unless you make a demand on it, it'll never come to you. You could live and die and never benefit from it if you didn't make a demand on it. That's the way it is concerning the promises of God and the provisions that he's made available. It's through faith that we have access into those provisions. That's offer number 7245, Faith for Kingdom Provisions. Two CDs for $15 plus $4 postage and handling, a total of $19. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Until tomorrow, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. To order the product offered today, call 1-877-396-9400 or write Charles Caps, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. A complete list of CDs, books, and DVDs are available online at charlescaps.com. Through the website, you can listen to this radio program again and subscribe to our podcast. This broadcast is sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our listeners in this area.